In this video, we'll delve into the most influencing factor of credit scores, which is payment history and all the ideal conditions and adverse actions you want to avoid. I'm Kat, and welcome to Screaming Lincoln's Consumer Credit Series. Payments are the heartbeat of a living credit score. If payments stop with balances still owed, the score drops dramatically. The more payments you have reporting in your credit history from various lenders, the better. Nah, I'm good with my one credit card. It's my workhorse that I use for everything. At the end of the month, I pay it off and repeat. Why would I want to complicate my life with more payments to juggle every month to all those lenders? I agree. One payment is much easier. But consider how thin your credit portfolio appears. If you miss just one payment after a five-year span of timely payments, then your on-time payment history ratio is significantly affected. Having just one missed payment occur every five years means your on-time payment history ratio is 98%, which carries a moderate risk level according to Credit Karma. Most people would walk away from a test score of 98% with their head high, but not so when it comes to credit. In fact, Missing just one payment every seven years can be enough for lenders to deny an applicant. Let's re-examine this same scenario, except we'll add four more revolving accounts to the mix. Each card has its own spending and auto pay scheme, which ensures timely payments get reported every month. Now the on-time payment ratio is still near 100% because there are so many other payments getting reported. The loan missed payment will be noticed by lenders on a credit report. There's nothing to be done once it's on there and a goodwill letter is rejected by the lender. What's done is done. But the timely payment ratio is barely affected at all. Over time, the sting fades. More so with numerous timely payments being reported in the same time frame. I've seen lenders be more willing to work with borrowers in this scenario especially if it's been at least a couple years since the missed payment occurred. So while having just one single payment to make is definitely easier, having multiple payments report every month goes much further in establishing a strong payment history and building good relationships with lenders. Implementing a sound spending and auto pay scheme can minimize borrowers' chances of ever missing a payment. Whoa, okay. I didn't know that about payment history. It certainly puts missed payments in perspective. I'm just not sure how to juggle making so many payments each month. Then I have to carry so many cards with me to use each month. I mean, how do people not miss a payment when life happens with all these cards? Fair question. For me, I'm lazy, which means I prefer doing as much as I can at home in my underwear. This leaves $1 Amazon loads as a great option in generating spend, or splitting my insurance payments into much smaller payments every month by spreading them out amongst the numerous cards I have. Enrolling different cards for smaller recurring charges also goes a long way in satisfying the monthly activity requirement to sustain a healthy payment history profile. The goal of these spending scenarios is simple, Create a payment situation that can easily be managed with auto pay, which is a feature nearly all credit cards now offer. I want credit transactions that are quick and cheap enough to pay without thinking about it. My go-to is $1 Amazon loads, when Amazon doesn't block me from loading. The auto pay feature from my credit card takes care of the rest. This is a credit activity scheme and is used by many savvy credit users to sustain a thriving payment history, which facilitates achieving an 800 plus credit score. But if you like having everything line up perfectly, you can always request a new payment due date from lenders to land on the same date. Thanks to recent credit regulations, lenders cannot move payment due dates a day or two like they used to. Once a payment due date is set, it is static and cannot change from each month to the next. The statement end date 
can change month to month, but thankfully the payment due date cannot. Between the low recurring payment options available to you and the auto pay and aligning due dates, missing a payment shouldn't pose a problem. Payments are the heartbeat of a credit score, so I'll always do my best to get as many reporting every month as possible to sustain my healthy payment history, which keeps my credit score elevated. All right, but how much would my score go down if I were to miss a payment? Would it recover quickly since I've got so many of them reporting every month? Dude, they're all E. A person's credit score definitely goes down when a missed payment gets reported. It's difficult to say how much due to the complexity of credit algorithms and how sensitive they are. But there is an inverse correlation in the negative impact of a missed payment against someone who doesn't have any missed payments. What I'm getting at is credit algorithms don't react well to major negative events like missed payments or exceeding your credit limit across all your cards when you've demonstrated consistent responsible credit behavior. This graph represents a simplified version of this concept. Note how easy it is to experience a dramatic drop versus slow consistent improvement. However, dramatic increases are possible with the authorized user method or piggybacking, which I explain in another video. Here's an example. Two people, each of them has a very recent missed payment appear in their credit history. One of them already had a poor credit history. The effect of the missed payment on their score was very minimal. The lower score reflects the credit algorithm's ability to take their prior history into account. So when another adverse event, like a missed payment occurs, it's something that's expected. Because of this expectation, the drop in their score is not very severe. The other person, however, had a stellar credit history. The effect of a missed payment is monumental and can easily knock them from an excellent credit rating to a good credit rating. It's still good, but if this person were in the market for a mortgage, I promise you the interest hike wouldn't be as good had they maintained their excellent credit score. People with 800 plus credit scores can expect an approximate drop of a whopping 75 points based on FICO's own sample FICO scoring model example. Personally, I've never missed a payment, but I've worked with other people with excellent credit that report drops as small as 48 points and up to nearly 100 points. Again, credit algorithms are complex and take many factors into account as activity gets reported. So this is very much a case of your mileage may vary when it occurs. However, the inverse correlation rule will apply as people with poor credit history won't have as significant drops as people with excellent credit. On a separate but related topic, missed payments come in several sizes, 30, 60, 90, all the way up to 180 day, missed payments can appear on an individual's credit history. The longer the missed payment, the bigger the impact on the credit score. If the account goes to collections, then that's the final straw and the account is closed, with all the late pays still recorded in the credit history for the next seven years. The DOLA, or date of last activity, for the account will be the date the account was closed and sold to collections. This is when the seven-year clock starts. I'm getting off topic, but there's careful steps to take once an account goes to collections. Just answering a phone call from a collector can restart the clock if you answer the collector's questions in a way that reaffirms the debt is yours, which is very easy to do. If you'd like to see a video on how to handle collection accounts, just type yes to collection accounts, please, in the comments and I'll get one started. Well, how about if I just keep the account open and don't use the card? That seems like it should work, plus there's no way I'd miss a payment because I won't have one. Nope. Two reasons. First, lenders have to use resources to keep accounts open. They won't let you ride free for too long and will cut you loose. 
Sometimes they won't even give you any notice before they do. Citibank, everyone's looking at you. Remember, credit is a privilege, not a right. That card lenders give you, or lack thereof in the case of Apple, doesn't belong to you. It is the property of the lender and is revocable. Don't give them a reason to close it because it can lower your credit score if they do. Second, lenders usually don't report activity when there's no activity to report. Remember the heartbeat? Additionally, according to the same sample FICO scoring model from earlier, having a small balance of just $1 report is better for your credit score than having $0. I've experienced this myself and have maintained $1 balances across many cards as a result. Keep in mind, I'm not carrying a balance. To clarify, I'm paying my statement balance in full every month, then loading my Amazon account with $1 and repeating the cycle. No interest is ever paid and the payment history gets updated every month across numerous cards. When it comes to credit cards, you need an effective credit activity scheme. It will pay off in the long run. Okay then, how long do I have to keep this credit scheme thing up? I've got other things to worry about, dude. According to the sample FICO scoring model, four years. However, I prefer to keep it going as long as possible. Decades in my case. Remember, you can hack this part of the scoring model by adding yourself as an authorized user to a responsible primary account holder's card or piggybacking as it's called. I have another video that covers this topic in great detail. It's still a great option to cheat at building your payment history because the authorized user inherits the account history of the primary account holder. For me, Payments are an ongoing part of how I handle my finances. I must make small, timely payments each month to each card. In the long run, if I ever miss a payment, its effect will be minimal. There are ways to get it removed, but even if those are unsuccessful, most lenders I have accounts with are willing to work with me and always give me the best terms for my accounts because of my extensive relationships with them. So my answer to how long is best illustrated with this Glen Gary Glen Ross chestnut. Always be paying. Hashtag heartbeat. All right, I get it. How many cards do I need to have a healthy payment history? According to the sample FICO scoring model, three. But again, I prefer as many accounts as possible so the payments add up quickly. Hashtag heartbeat. Credit experts and bloggers often boast how many cards they have, and it can get ridiculous. My number is only in the teens, but if you check their credit score, most of them have and maintain an excellent credit score. Why? Do I really have to say it? So I have to be a bit of a credit slut when it comes to this credit game, would you say? Your words, not mine. But I see your point. Yes, I prefer to get as many cards as I can with every lender out there. However, I wouldn't abuse it by opening and closing multiple cards every month. That's credit card churning, and it's been throttled in recent years with lenders adopting their own stringent credit review processes in response to consumers getting savvy to how credit works from various online resources. My approach to credit doesn't involve closing cards as often as a seasoned credit churner. I prefer to maintain longer, active relationships with all lenders. Sure, I usually receive a nice bonus when I sign up for a card, but I always do my best to keep using it and try to keep it open as long as possible. In rare cases, I do close cards, often because the annual fee outweighs the benefit. How many payments, or how long, Will it take until I can apply for premium cards that come with huge sign-up bonuses? I've always wanted to travel in first class and stay at hotels for free like I see on lots of other travel blog sites. Remember, more is better when it comes to the payments being reported. That doesn't give permission to spend money like crazy. 
spread necessary expenses out in a way that every card gets at least a tiny piece so their payments get reported. Business credit cards usually don't affect personal credit, except for the few listed here. There's no magic formula that will unlock access to premium cards because lenders use a proprietary credit scoring model, like FICO bank card scoring model. Lenders also look at other factors beyond what credit algorithms provide, like what's your total net worth? Do you own or rent? How long have you been at your current job? What's your income look like? And so on. Personally, I would prefer hitting 100 timely payments in my payment history before applying for a premium card. This means I'd have to wait over eight years if I relied on just one credit account. Or I could speed things along with the credit builder loan and opening a few other cards known to be easier to get approved. The credit game is a marathon. The important part is starting the journey, not rushing through it. Before you know it, a few years pass and you're ready to make the jump to premium credit products. But getting back to the beginning of the credit journey, having many payments report every month for years in your credit history will go a long way, but other factors can help the approval process along. I prefer to show my best credit self when I apply. That means I may have to open a checking and savings account with the lender to establish an existing relationship, especially if I have little or no credit history for them to go on. I may also open other credit accounts like a credit builder loan through a lender that doesn't do a credit check. The loan payments get reported every month, which build my credit. I've got a video going over this option to make your credit case appealing to lenders when you apply. Lenders avoid risk like the plague, and having little to no credit history is seen as high risk. So I do what I can to ease their concern by showing them what my financial picture looks like and getting as many payments reported as possible, all while paying little to no interest in the process. The credit system almost sounds like a scam. I mean, if I got the money and can show I'm responsible with it, why do I have to go through all this BS? Why can't a lender look at my paychecks going into my checking account and see where the money goes? I know how to spend money responsibly and manage my money. Why do I have to play these games? You make an excellent point. I agree, credit can seem like a game, but like a game, it can be hacked and manipulated in ways to your benefit. Who wants to pay more for insurance because they have no credit? Who wants to pay an outrageous security deposit along with first and last month's rent when moving into a new place because you have a few missed payments? The credit system isn't going away. It continues to evolve and has become ingrained in many aspects of adult life beyond credit. As you become more aware of how this stuff works, you can exploit the credit game and get in a better place and not feel so helpless when the time comes for a big financial decision. Don't stand by idly when it comes to your credit. Take control of it because when life happens and you're cash strapped, Credit can get you through times of uncertainty until you're back on your feet. It looks like I've got a few more cards to open and maybe a credit builder thingy too. Then I've got to use my own credit activity scheme thingy to put low amounts on these cards every month and set them to auto pay. My OCD will get the better of me if I don't change the payment due dates to land on the same date every month, which sounds like an easy task via direct message or phone call to the lender. Within a couple years, I'll have a healthy payment history and can move on to more premium cards and when I'm ready, perhaps a mortgage. As you say, hashtag heartbeat. Well said. If you have a question, please hit me up in the comments anytime. What are you waiting for? Hit it, Steve.